welcome back so in this video i'm going to be going over editing your tools now remember if you actually have operations created that's going to make your operations dirty so you're going to have to regenerate or basically recalculate that operation every time you change anything that has to do with the tooling okay and the reason for that is because it has to calculate whether that tool is actually going to be going in and hitting your part and all of that so the tool is going to be shorter for example or wider and it has to recalculate that entire operation. The tool path becomes different whenever you change some of your tooling. So come over here under Tool Manager. There's a few ways to do this. So come over here and basically double click any of the tools that you're using. For example, I'll double click on quarter of an inch ball and mill. And you'll get this edit tool dialog box will appear showing you a graphic, a very nice graphic of the tool on the right side and all the different ways you can actually change your tool. For example, in this one, I got a very small cutting area, all right? So that's what we call a cutting length. And our overall length is two and a half inches. Now, if you just click on any of these boxes, it will show you a graphic of exactly what you're changing. For example, the cutting diameter is a quarter of an inch. Now, we'll keep it that way. The overall length is two and a half inches, okay? And the cutting length is a half an inch. So the cutting length is all the yellow area. Anytime you see yellow within a tool, that is the cutting area. Now, this is how I would change it. All you need to do is change it, for example, to 1.5, and there you go. So now your cutting area is much bigger, okay? Maybe we'll make it 1.0 to look a little bit better. So there you go. So there's your cutting area. So now you can also change your tip corner treatment. You can actually make it a flat, which would make it a flat end mill, okay? You could also have a chamfer on the corner of the uh, part or the end mill, all right? You can also have a radius. Okay, and make it full round, which is what we had as a ball end mill. So you can change the tool right here. Now the shoulder length, you can create a shoulder length, which is from the shoulder over here to the, and you can make it maybe 1.25. I usually like to have this area closer to the uh, machinable area. Okay, and usually is whenever you see a tool. Now shoulder diameter, which is the same diameter of uh, the tool. You always want to keep it the same diameter, especially with a ball end mill. And the shank diameter is on top. You can also change that as well. Now, you also can make the shank, di shank a straight. You can make it a, with a little bit bigger. And you can also make a, a reduced neck. Now, when you do a reduced neck, you can actually have an option uh, to change the neck size as well, as well as the neck length. Okay, now, there's are very few tools that I've ever used to have that done. But it is uh, there for you to change. And I've seen tools uh, that can be used that way as well. So... It really has to depend on whatever tool that you actually have and not just changing it uh, for fun, but really changing it to whatever tool that you're actually using. And each of these tools have their own purpose. All right. So uh, next, you can go to finalize properties. So under finalize properties, you can actually assign a tool number, for example, over here. OK, uh, length offset, diameter offset, uh, even uh, uh, surface feed, uh, per minute plunge rate, feed rates, retract rate, all of that now. All of these things have to do more with uh, CNC rather than master cam. So if you notice on this DVD, I actually don't go through uh, feed rates and, uh, and all that because it does, and even spindle speed, because I don't know what machine you have, I don't know what material you have, and I certainly don't know what tooling you're using. And that all has to depend with that. So unless you have the same exact setup as me, it's, uh, it does not make any sense for me to teach you how to change all of those or uh, really what to do with them because there's not a right or wrong way. It really has to do with the tooling, uh, your machine, and the material that you're using to cut your part. All right, you can also change the spindle direction over here. Even the material, you can change it to whatever you like as well. Under general, this is where you change the name. So if you want to even want to call it end mill space one, for example, uh, you can do a description to maybe what that tool is actually machining. Manufacturer name of that tool. Now, it gives you some a lot of actually manufacturing and most of the tool manufacturers are in here but if it's not you can type in your own name or add it by clicking on the add button you'll have this pop up you will add it and it will pop up over here so for example say vt pros creates tools so i'm going to type in vt pros select ok and now when i click on the down arrow and go all the way down there is vt pros okay so you can always add your tool manufacturer even the tool code now, those can be very helpful for whenever you want to make sure that the person maybe you're handing off this program to knows exactly what tools to use and don't mess up. 
okay there's a lot of confusion that can keep going whenever you hand the program to the operator uh, they can easily bring in the wrong tool so that can help a lot and also there's tool grade so you can select your tool grade there's MasterCom default tool grade over here or you can add your own as well okay you can also select if this is a roughing tool or a finishing tool all right and you can also assign the rough and finish step over over here so that's how you set up your tool and you can have that tool uh, be as much as you like uh, there's a few more options over here the import to link custom you can also save profile of the geometry you can import a link to custom geometry um, there's a few options over here that you have to change now you can also select scalable but not in this one uh, you can see that I can zoom in and out of the screen okay and you can also rotate your part so I uh, definitely take advantage of that especially if you want to see the bottom tip of your tool uh, it can definitely be helpful so this is a quick overview of tool editing. We will definitely be um, creating tools as well as editing tools during our exercises.